Eating the wrong foods post-workout can stunt muscle growth, cause fat gain, and dehydrate your body. You can easily spend an hour or longer working your butt off in the gym and reverse all that hard work with just one awful post-workout meal. And the worst part is that a lot of the common recommendations of what to eat or drink after a workout are actually based on outdated myths. So it's very likely that you're hurting your progress right now based on bad advice. So let's go over nine foods that you should limit or avoid post-workout. And first, we have high sugar foods and drinks. It's common to see people drinking things like Gatorade or other sports drinks directly after the workout. And there are actually a few reasons behind this. You see, during your workout, you deplete glycogen, which is a stored form of carbohydrates. That glycogen is used for energy and is beneficial for optimal performance, especially during high intensity activities like lifting weights or sprinting. By drinking a sports drink like Gatorade or even other high sugar non-sports drinks like soda or chocolate milk, you're able to refill those glycogen stores pretty quickly so your muscles are better prepared for your next intense workout. However, the problem is that a lot of people that work out are doing so because their goal is to burn fat and get lean. It's not to bulk up and it's not to become a better athlete. Unfortunately, the calories from high sugar drinks and high sugar foods like candy are not filling and will usually go on top of the calories that you already eat on a daily basis. You can still replenish your glycogen stores with the food you eat throughout the rest of the day after your workout. It'll just take a little longer, but complex carbohydrates are much more filling than simple sugars and they offer additional nutrients. A baked potato, for example, is one of the most filling carbohydrates according to the satiety index and it can be paired with a filling high protein meal to help you burn fat. Another common belief is that you need a bunch of sugar after workout to boost insulin because insulin helps shuttle nutrients like amino acids and glycogen into your muscle cells. And sure, maybe this can help if your goal is to maximize performance, maybe if you're training twice a day to become an athlete, or if you wanna bulk up and gain weight, but it's absolutely not necessary and can hurt your progress if your goal is fat loss. Whey protein itself is actually highly insulinogenic, so you can get the benefits of a spike in insulin just by having a low calorie whey protein shake after your workout, rather than taking in a bunch of extra sugar. Next is alcohol. This is something that you want to limit in your diet in general, and it definitely has no place after a workout for many reasons. First is dehydration. Alcohol is a diuretic, which means it increases urine production, which can lead to dehydration. This is the exact opposite of what you want. After a workout, your body needs to rehydrate to recover properly. Drinking alcohol, on the other hand, can lead to muscle cramps, fatigue, and impaired performance. The second issue is that alcohol can interfere with your body's ability to repair and rebuild muscle tissue after a workout. This is due to its negative effect on protein synthesis and other essential metabolic functions. This can lead to our third problem, which is that alcohol post-workout will hinder muscle growth. It's obvious that sending alcohol to your broken down muscle tissues instead of amino acids for recovery is a very bad idea for gaining muscle. But that's not all. Alcohol can affect the balance of hormones in your body, including testosterone, which is very important for muscle growth. Another issue is that alcohol can interfere with the absorption of essential nutrients, including vitamins and minerals. Also, just like sugar, alcohol contains empty calories with mostly no nutritional value contributing to fat gain. On top of that, it can easily cause you to make bad decisions and overindulge. After a hard workout, you're likely to already feel hungry as it is, but alcohol can lower inhibition, impair your judgment, and lower self-control. It can also enhance the taste and smell of food. It can release more dopamine, making you feel good while eating that junk food, and it can reduce the feeling of being full. That'll probably lead you to eat the next foods that you should avoid after workout, which are fried foods, as well as other highly fattening foods like pizza and hot dogs. The first reason why you should avoid fried food is because just like pastries and foods high in sugar, fried foods are extremely calorically dense. This is mostly due to all the added fats used in frying. Eating all those extra calories, especially from unhealthy sources like mozzarella sticks, fried chicken, cheeseburgers, and pizza can lead to weight gain, which again is the opposite of why a large majority of people work out to begin with. High fat foods will also interfere with digestion. Eating them immediately after workout can slow down the absorption of nutrients needed for recovery. If you had a pre-workout meal or you ate earlier in the day, this isn't much of a problem. But if you work out on an empty stomach, you'll want to supply your body with those nutrients sooner rather than later after a workout. Another thing you shouldn't eat after workout is just salad or just vegetables. This is actually an extremely common problem for inexperienced gym goers who are trying to lose weight and go all in. There's nothing wrong with eating salad, but when it's the only thing you eat after workout, you're missing out on other essential nutrients for recovery. 
Many beginners feel that a salad is a perfect meal post-workout, and just by mixing in some lettuce, carrots, cucumbers, and a handful of nuts for protein, they're making the healthiest choice they possibly can. But a handful of nuts offers nowhere near enough protein, and you want your post-workout meal to include enough protein because the amino acids found within are the building blocks of your muscle, and they're used for healing, recovery, and growth. So by simply adding some chicken or tuna to your salad, you can easily create a far better post-workout meal. Another common mistake is eating excessive protein bars or energy bars after a workout. A very common protein bar that most people like to eat after a workout is a Quest bar. There are roughly 200 calories in one of these protein bars, and this is fairly consistent across other bars with a similar amount of protein. So if you just have one bar, you'll be supplying your body the protein it needs while also keeping calories relatively low. However, if you eat two or three protein or energy bars, you can easily add 500 to 600 calories when you could have used those calories on filling whole foods with much better nutrient profiles. Unfortunately, when protein bars are eaten in excess, they become basically like candy bars that can lead to fat gain. This goes without even mentioning the higher calorie protein bars like MetRx bars, for example, which have over 400 calories in just one bar. You eat two of these and you've just consumed over 800 extra calories that aren't very satiating. Instead, you can just have a whey protein shake, which shouldn't really cost you more than around 120 calories, or even if you require more protein, two servings will only cost you 240 calories with hardly any additional fats or carbs. And this actually brings me to another food you should not have post-workout mass gainers. Mass gainers in general are a waste of money. Even if you're trying to bulk up or gain weight, you can make far better mass gainers on your own by mixing some basic ingredients like protein powder, oatmeal, whole milk, and bananas. Mass gainers and meal replacement shakes are low in nutrient density because they lack vitamins and minerals. They often contain artificial flavors, colors, and preservatives, as well as unhealthy fats or low quality protein sources. In fact, they're usually made from protein concentrate rather than isolate. Concentrate is an inferior form of protein. This is because they can get away with adding a bunch of extra carbs into their protein powder. In fact, mass gainers will usually have a ton of added sugar on top of the carbs that already come from the lower quality protein source to add extra calories. On top of all that, they tend to be expensive for no reason. You're much better off making your own if you're trying to bulk up. And if you're trying to lose fat, you obviously should be saving these calories for far more filling, nutrient-rich, high-protein meals made up of whole foods. Another mistake is eating nothing at all after your workout. Even though it's a myth that you need to have a post-workout meal immediately after a workout or else you'll miss out on the mythical anabolic window, it is true that you should have some protein sometime soon after your workout, preferably within the first couple hours. This is once again especially true if you trained in a fasted state or if you did a workout first thing in the morning before eating. In that case, you want to at least have some protein to stop muscle protein breakdown and to stimulate muscle protein synthesis so you can jumpstart the recovery process. The next thing you shouldn't have after your workout is anti-inflammatory medication like Advil and Tylenol. Some people respond to the soreness and the discomfort that they feel after a workout by taking Tylenol or Advil. One effect of these drugs and other NSAIDs in general is that they suppress inflammation. Even though chronic inflammation is bad for muscle growth and recovering from workouts, acute inflammation is actually beneficial. For example, interleukin-6 is one of the markers of inflammation in the body. Research shows that resting IL-6 levels, likely due to chronic inflammation, these negatively correlate with muscle growth, but an elevation in IL-6 post-exercise actually aids muscle growth. So while chronic inflammation decreases the ability of your body to repair muscle cells and stimulate muscle growth, the acute or short-term inflammatory response that happens after a workout activates satellite cells and starts the muscle repair process, which of course helps you build muscle and recover from your workout. So it's best to not consume non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs before or after you train. It's proven in many studies that doing this makes your workouts far less effective. Last but not least, you should avoid having highly processed foods like chips, crackers, and packaged snacks after a workout, and limit these foods in your diet in general. These snacks are typically calorie dense but very low in nutrients because they lack essential vitamins, minerals, and the protein necessary for muscle recovery and overall health. 
Usually snacks like these are very high in unhealthy fats, sodium, and refined carbohydrates, which can lead to dehydration, spikes in blood sugar, and digestive issues. The empty calories that processed foods and snacks provide can easily lead to overconsumption, which will cause fat gain. This goes without mentioning that long-term consumption of these foods has been linked to an increased risk of chronic health conditions. Instead, for your post-workout meal, you want to choose nutrient-dense whole foods that offer a balanced combination of lean protein, complex carbohydrates rather than simple ones, and healthy fats. So those are nine of the worst foods and beverages that you should avoid after a workout. While some of them can lead to fat and weight gain, others like plain salads, don't have enough nutrients on their own because they're lacking in protein. I really hope this video has helped you out. If it has, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Also, if you want to simplify your transformation process and you wanna avoid the common mistakes that most people fall for, try my free six week shred program. You'll get a personalized diet plan, a recipe book, a workout plan, and a coach to help you whenever you need. Clients that go through this program consistently get incredible results in just six weeks, and they get it for free as long as they simply follow the plan. To learn how you can join this program, click the link in the description below, or you can just visit my website directly at gravitytransformation.com. I'll see you guys soon.